Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Wednesday, March 24th. This is your daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr. The Minnesota game is in 162 days. The game against Michigan in 248 days. The Ohio State football team will hold its third practice of the spring later on today. That may not seem like a lot, but it is as many as they got in all of spring 2020. So, yes, that's good. That's not so bad. Uh, yesterday, we got a chance to talk to the running backs and get a sense for how that six-man race for the starting running back gig could be going this spring. Uh, my guest today is Buckeye Scoop reporter Tony Gerdeman. And, you know, Tony, it seems like just about any of those guys could ultimately win that starting job. But at least entering the spring, it sounds like Master Teague is probably still at the top of that depth chart. Yeah, I, I, Ryan Day already called him the incumbent, and then Tony Alford doubled down and said if there was a game tomorrow that Master Teague would be the starter because he's the veteran. He is the returning starter, and certainly there hasn't been enough done yet to for for anybody to overtake him. And I don't even, you know, we'll see if, if something like that can happen this spring. But yeah, it's Master Teague and everybody else, and that's where things really get kind of interesting then yeah right after that it's like okay there's a whole lot of guys to talk about because i mean this is a six-man race and really all six guys could potentially be in that mix for for playing time this fall so let's start with the three returning guys all of whom you know they've all flashed at turn at times during their ohio state careers all of whom could have a very very important spring ahead of them for different reasons let's start with mayan williams you know i think most people feel like they know what the Buckeyes might have in him. Um, he made some plays you know, later in the season last year. And then you look at the stat chart and it's like, oh, he, he's still a redshirt freshman because he only played in four games and he only had 10 carries. It's like, okay, do you think the coaching staff views him as much of, you know, as much of a known quantity as maybe the fan base does? You know, I, I have that same question because what we, it, it's amazing the, the judgment that we have made based on the, those, those 10 carries and, I, they were all almost all of them impressive and made you say wow but you're still at the end of the day averaging six yards a carry which is you know it's fine but i think what i want to know and probably what tony alfred wants to know is what else do you do and what else does he do can he hit the home run we know he can make the first guy miss and then lower his shoulder and he's hard to see you know from over the the offensive line but can he hit that hole right up the middle and be gone? Can he split the safeties? Can he get the edge? I think that's what we're still waiting to see. And uh, I guess that would be one of the positive things we would see this spring if that happens. Although then would you just um, blame the defense? <laughs> Always the best part of spring, no matter what happens, there's something to be angry about on every single play. <laughs> Someone has screwed up really badly on every single play, which is great. That's, that's what, we, what everyone is here for. You know, the next guy is Marcus Crowley, and he's someone who, you know, coming out of high school was the Gatorade player of the year in the state of Florida. I mean, he obviously has a ton of talent, looked like he was on his way to big things as a true freshman in 2019, and then blew out his knee in uh, the Maryland game, and then had a very difficult recovery from that ACL injury. And, you know, looked like a superstar in the making before that injury, and then was like very, very clearly not 100% last season. And then, the question is like, okay, what what is he now? And and that starts that you know that starts now. That starts today when they put pads on for the first time. He's an interesting guy to me because when you go back and watch his high school highlights, he's hitting all kinds of home runs, but he doesn't do it like a J.K. Dobbins with you know making six guys miss or a jump cut. He's just he he hits the hole quickly and then he's gone and he is able to make guys miss as well. So there's some shiftiness there. And then when we saw him as a freshman. He averaged over nine yards a carry and had a couple of decent carries in there, 20, 30 yarders in, in, his, uh, in his time. And he's not like a flashy guy. He's just very solid, very consistent. And we'll see how he is now a year plus removed from the ACL injury in 2019. He wasn't quite there last year, as Tony Alford told us. And now he believes... Uh, Crowley certainly believes that he is is where he needs to be, but he did also say, "We'll see once the pads go on because it's the the practice is is fine, but it's not until there's full contact that you really start to feel like, okay, now I know what I have. I know my ACL is good, my knee is fine. I can cut." He said, you know, "The cutting wasn't where it needed to be last year. He thinks it's there this year, but he'll know more in, in the coming weeks." And, I think he's a guy that people are forgetting about because 
the, the, the freshmen are flashy. Mayan Williams and his 10 carries were doing, doing what he did the one or two plays against Clemson was impressive. And so that has a lot of people talking and a lot of buzz. But, you know, Crowley is, he, he looked really good as a freshman. And then, you know, he's still hungry. He's still talented. And he saw, you know, what happened last year. And I, I wonder, like, him seeing what Trey Sermon was able to do, like Trey Sermon wasn't the starter to start the season, but it didn't matter by the end. As long as you show what you could do and then you do it in the game, it doesn't matter who is starting. As long if you're the guy rushing for 300 yards, it's your team. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, uh, you know, who, the guys who were the starters at the beginning of the season could also not be the starters at the end of the season. That's, that's kind of another interesting angle to this where it's like, you know, we, you, we feel like we're going to come out of spring camp and it's like, aha, we're going to know who the running backs are. It's like, well, that's who the, the running backs are going into the summer camp. And then after summer camp, then it's end of the season. And then sometimes it changes during the season. And yeah, this is, this is kind of a little bit of a moving target. And I think there's a decent possibility that four to five of these guys are top three running backs at some point this season. And that, you know, that, that it keeps shifting up and down a little bit. Um, you mentioned Crowley and how good he was as a freshman. 25 carries, 237 yards, 9.5 yards per carry as a freshman before that knee injury. Last fall, Steel Chambers had nine carries all season, nine carries, but averaged 9.6 yards per carry. I mean, that, that's pretty good as well. But it seemed like he might have slid down that depth chart a little bit last fall and, you know, again, only had nine carries. So, you know, th there have been rumors floating around that, you know, hey, maybe he's, you know, they're so deep at running back. Maybe they're going to think about moving him to linebacker or something like that. Tony Alford seemed pretty emphatic that, uh, no, that was not, in fact, the plan. Yeah, and said, uh, where is that coming from? It's not coming from this building. It's not coming from the WAC. It's not coming from anybody at Ohio State. And pretty much put it to bed, which is fine. And now, now you still have six running backs to figure out how, how you're going to play them. But, yeah, it, it, the talk about consistency and being able to be trusted, and that's, I guess, the, the fumbling issues is, pretty much what ended steel chambers situation last year and now like that's he know he knows what he needs to work on that's one of the things and it was interesting because there was times there were times last year where he was the most effective guy and, and what limited times we saw him when nothing, nobody else could get going he could and, and it just obviously wasn't able to sustain that but you saw that those flashes and it's easy to imagine that continuing i'm not saying he's going to average 9.6 yards per carry through his career but there is something to him there there is he's he's big but he also has wiggle he can uh he's not just some straight line guy but he can do that he can break tackles and he's a physical guy but uh, he's not just looking to create contact so there's there's a lot to like about him so they i, I think giving him this continued opportunity as with the other guys to i think alfred said you get what your works, your works deserve. And so there's, it's, it's, it's six guys, but again, you're competing against yourself throughout all of this as well. And if you put your, your best self out there, these are all guys who are talented enough that if you put your best self out there and nobody else does, it's your job. Yeah. That's a really intriguing part of this because it's like all of them have the talent to be the number one guy potentially this fall, but all of them have questions. Is it, you know, Hey, can master Teague make guys miss? Hey, is Marcus Crowley's knee healthy? Hey, can Mayan Williams, you know, keep doing what he did over that very, very small sample. Can steel chambers hang on to the football? How much are the two younger guys going to be potentially held back by the fact that they didn't play high school football last fall? Cause the two true freshmen, Travion Henderson and Evan Pryor, both came in from states where they did not have fall football last year, North Carolina and Virginia, both playing in the spring instead of the fall. So they have not had any real football for close to two calendar years now. And, you know, that is that's going to be a, a little bit of a hurdle, I think, to overcome. It was very interesting when we talked to them, though. They had, you know, very different opinions. Today is Wednesday is the day that they're putting on the pads for the first time. They had very different views on uh the first time they're really going to get drilled uh, as as college players by you know some some linebacker or something coming through the hole. They they had both very very different views on uh, what you know what that was and whether that was going to be a good thing or not. Yeah, and Travion Henderson said he spent his offseason training with with the track guy and staying in shape, and and that it would just you know take one good hit and practice with the pads on on Wednesday for him for it all to come back. And 
So that, that gives you kind of his his mentality. And then when that was mentioned to Evan Pryor, the fellow freshman, his his roommate Pryor is like, you know, I I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to get hit. I'm trying to score on every play. So that's where his mentality is. And uh, so it's, it was really interesting talking to both of those guys, very, very refreshing and excited about what lays ahead, but also knowing that they, they both talked about how the veterans have helped them every step of the way, because especially Travion Henderson had never been to Ohio state before until he enrolled and got here. And literally they had to help him along the way. Like, okay, you're the building you're looking for is two blocks that way. And, and it's not just helping him in the playbook. It's helping him in, uh, you know, Google maps and things like that and helping him just be a, a regular student. And, and so, um, yeah, both of these guys are really, really talented. And while there are six guys th- these guys have skill sets that I don't know that anybody else on the team has. And so you wonder, does that move them up? Because there are things that, that Ryan day and Kevin Wilson and Tony Alford want to do with them. But again, then it comes down to, will you hold on to the ball? Will you know exactly where you are supposed to cut in terms of pass routes or can you pick up a blitz? And that was another interesting thing they talked about as well. Yeah, and can you catch a ball out of the backfield? Can we trust you in the passing game? I mean, there's, there's a lot that goes into it other than just can you get the ball and run real fast in this one direction and not get tackled? Like that's that's an important part of being a running back. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the only part. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot here. We talked earlier about you know, hey, there can be it might be a top six now, and then the, it might be different in the summer, and then it might be different in the middle of the season. By October. Is either of the two true freshmen in that top two to three guys where they're getting carries that it's not just like total garbage time carries? Are there are either of those guys getting first half carries by October this year? Um, I man, that's really tough, Tom, because I because that now you're talking about is one of the, are one of those guys cutting into carries for Mayan Williams or Marcus Crowley, and I, I guess so because I, I just said they are guys that can't who can do what no other guy, no other running backs on these on this team can do. So you have to get them involved. We don't know if Mayan Williams is the home run hitter. Marcus Crowley isn't the the most jittery guy in terms of making guys miss. And Travion Henderson can do all of that. Evan Pryor can, you know, can he break tackles? I don't know. But I I I would I guess I would be more surprised if Travion Henderson isn't getting meaningful touches in October than I would be if, uh, if he is. So, yeah, I think, I think he's going to get in there and yeah, I mean, look, granted all we can see are pictures. He looks like he's, he's ready to, to go. And I think he's listed at five eleven two ten. That's, that's fine. That's um, a little bit taller than JK Dobbins and about the same weight. So I, I think it's workable. And J.K. Dobbins has sort of shown that, you, yes, you can come in. And, I mean, J.K. Dobbins also missed essentially his entire senior high school football season and came in and did, did just fine as a true freshman, had more than 1,000 yards. I don't know that I'm necessarily thinking that Henderson will have more than 1,000 yards, but J.K. Dobbins did not have the, uh, the, depth, uh, the depth chart that uh, Henderson is walking into. You know, J.K. Dobbins only started because Mike Weber tore his hamstring, and uh, after that it was Anto- Antonio Williams. And, no, no offense to Antonio Williams. There's, there's a lot of talent on this team that might be ahead of where Antonio Williams was in 2017. So, it is going to be a challenge. But I am, I'm with you there. I think Trevion Henderson, he just, he does enough stuff that you're going to want someone to do, at, that no one else on the team necessarily has the ability to do to the degree he does. So, you know, it, again, there's, there's a lot that goes into this blitz pickup and receiving and knowing where to cut and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think he's at least in that mix. If not, you know, I mean, maybe this is like one of those Alabama three headed running back monster mm-hmm. things where, you know, you've got, you've got three guys who are all getting eight, 10 carries a game. I, I think it's reasonable to think he'd be, you know, in that, in that mix. What did, what did Tony Alfred have to say about, uh, you know, the, the idea that, you know, Hey, he was, he was asked like, you're trying to balance carries between different guys. It hasn't always worked out real well in the past, but he, uh, he had some thoughts on that. Yeah, he said the goal is to win. Now, write this down, everybody. The goal is to win the game, and however you have to do that, you do that. And sometimes you're, you know, he would play Mike Weber. Sometimes you play J.K. Dobbins to get that done. And it's, 
it, it's interesting to because he was kind of gruff about the answer when somebody told him asked him like you know it hasn't really worked for you and you look at the record ohio state's record while tony alfred has been been here you know been here with urban meyer and been here with ryan day it's pretty much everything has worked well when you consider the record <laughs> and certainly whatever tony alfred has done at running backs ha has worked well enough i i think we all agree that the situation in 2018 had many reasons for the difficulties not the least of which was jk Dobbins not approaching it properly and i, I think he, he he saw his own mistakes and didn't want to you know repeat those the following year but I, I think other i think everybody has kind of learned from that 2018 situation and these are different guys than, than that and the offensive line is different and the ability of the, for the quarterback who all three of these quarterbacks can run more than Dwayne Haskins. So there's, there's many reasons to think that sharing carries. I, it doesn't, I, you know, I, I don't think it will hamper any of them. Um, I, we saw Trey Sermon get better as the, the more carries he got. I think that's everybody though, but it doesn't mean you have to be bad until you finally get 25 carries. Well, and you can also have the three headed running back monster that then as the season goes on, that kind of keeps guys fresher throughout the season because they're not, you know, you don't have that accumulation of hits on your body. And then when, you know, when you get down to the nitty gritty, it's like a team kind of shaving its rotation down going into March, a basketball team, kind of the same thing. You might, you might have that with the running backs this year as well as guys uh, continue to develop and uh, progress. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think the quarterbacks might be more mobile than Dwayne Haskins. And I think the offensive line is probably going to be better than that 2018 one as well. So should be a fun uh, a fun spring to watch these uh, watch these guys and uh, Thursday we're talking tomorrow talking linebackers so we will have a whole uh, whole bunch more stuff there for you we did a, a much deeper dive on the running backs on the episode of Buckeye Weekly that dropped yesterday and uh, you can find that and all of our great podcasts on Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts SoundCloud Spreaker Spotify wherever you find podcasts you can find our podcast just search Buckeye Scoop to find all of those you can subscribe right there so you never miss an episode and uh, leave us a five-star rating and review, which will help other folks find those shows. Also, make sure you subscribe to BuckeyeScoop.com. There has been a ton of fantastic content. Nevada Buck, we'll see if I can get Nevada Buck on the show for tomorrow. I know everyone loves a good Nevada Buck show, but uh, he has had some great, great stuff from inside uh, inside the Woody Hayes this week. Uh, it, and that will only continue as spring ball continues. So uh, make sure you subscribe to BuckeyeScoop.com to get access to all of his great stuff on the Ask the Insiders board, as well as the rest of our incredible team of uh, reporters and uh, recruiting analysts and, you know, whatever the heck Tony and I do, like we're, we're there too. Um, you can uh, find that all at BuckeyeScoop.com. Also make sure you check out uh, YouTube.com slash BuckeyeScoop. You can find all of our, uh, all of our podcasts there, uh, all of our videos when we did the, all of those running back interviews we did with uh, all six of those guys or five of those guys yesterday and plus Tony Alford. Uh, you can find those at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. And we've got those interviews. We'll have uh, Mick Walker has been working OT, doing uh, a bunch of camps and, and covering uh, scouting players in person. All that stuff's going to be on that YouTube channel. You can find everything you could possibly want at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. All you have to do is go there and hit subscribe, and you'll get notified every time we post a new video. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We will talk to you tomorrow.